this is Carolina Moore with AlwaysExpectMore.com and this is project one for Summer Sew Camp. We are making a little stuffed heart and a pin cushion that's going to come in so handy with all the different projects. Remember, there is a packet with all the information on how to make these projects and that download link is in the description box so make sure you get a parent's permission before clicking on that link and getting the download with all of the instructions. Our first project for Summer Sew Camp is a pincushion and a stuffed heart. You can make one or the other or both. They're actually fairly similar in the way that they're made. We're gonna go ahead and get started. I think it's great to start with a pincushion because then you're actually making a tool that you're gonna be using, but it's completely up to you. So getting started, I have my felt here and I need to cut it into a three inch square, actually two three inch squares. In the instructions, you'll see I use two different colors, one to indicate the back and one to indicate the front, but you can use the same color for both the front and the back if that's what you want. So I've got my ruler and my marker. If you have an adult who's comfortable using a rotary cutter, you can have them use a rotary cutter. But I'm gonna show you everything using scissors and markers so that you don't ever have to use a rotary cutter if you're not prepared for that. If you're going to be using a rotary cutter, I'd obviously suggest that you go research safe ways to use a rotary cutter because I have a nice scar on my finger from the first time that I used a rotary cutter. So I'm just making some three inch boxes and I'm following the three inch line and this edge here was straight so I'm using that edge but this edge here wasn't straight and so I'm straightening up that edge here. and I'm gonna cut right on that line with my scissors. When you're using scissors, you wanna use nice, sharp scissors. Our scissors that we use for fabric shouldn't also get used for paper because paper will dull your scissors really quickly. So you wanna use scissors that you're only using on fabric and never use them on paper to keep them nice and sharp. So now that I've cut my squares, I'm gonna show you a trick. I have these lines drawn on there and I used a water soluble marker. So if I wet those lines, they'll kind of dissolve into the water, but I can also take my two squares and put them right sides together or marker sides together. So that way now those marks are invisible. Okay, so I have my squares and I'm gonna go ahead and pin with a couple pins to hold them in place. When I pin, I pin what's called perpendicular to the line. So the edge is going this way and I'm going the opposite way. So it kind of crosses like an X or a plus mark. And I do that with the ball facing out like this and that's gonna make the pins easier to get out of the way when we sew. Careful that you don't poke yourself with the pins because they can be sharp. Okay, so it's all pinned and I'm gonna take this to my sewing machine. Right here, I've got a little handle that lifts up, this is called the presser foot, and that lifts up and lowers the presser foot. Also, this machine has a button where I can make the machine go slower, so even if I slam down on the foot pedal, it's not gonna go too fast. I definitely recommend that for people who are new to sewing. You're gonna lift up the presser foot so that the product is just underneath the needle. And then we're just gonna sew. You'll notice that my fingers are holding everything in place, but I'm not pushing anything through, nothing's bunching, and I'm not pulling anything through from the back. My hand's just here to kind of keep it flat and smooth. And when I get close to a pin, I wanna take that pin out, put it with my other pins, before I run over it. If you run over a pin, you might accidentally, 
actually hit the pin with your needle and that can bend the pin and get all into the gears in the bottom of your sewing machine and that's bad. So you can sew all the way across if you want and then start again going the other way. I feel like that's extra work that we don't need to do. You can get kind of close to the end, lift up the presser foot, turn it around, and then put the presser foot back down. Notice that the whole time my needle was down and holding everything in place. So let me show you again. The needle is down, I lift up the presser foot, I turn, and I put the presser foot back down. And then I can just start sewing again. When you're all done sewing, there's actually a little blade on the side of most sewing machines that you can use to just cut off the threads and then your machine will be all set and ready to stitch the next one. So now I have my finished sewing and I've sewn three sides and then left it open. So I've basically made myself a little pocket. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this pocket. Now you have some choices about what you fill your pocket with. If you wanted it to just be a pillow, you could use some kind of fluff or batting. If you wanted your pocket to be a pincushion, which we are, I recommend using crushed walnut shells. You can actually find those at the pet store or there's a lot of quilt shops that will sell a baggie of crushed walnut shells because a lot of people like using them for pincushions. So you could put crushed walnut shells in there, which is what we're gonna do today. If you don't have access to crushed walnut shells, another option is just dry rice. You can put dry rice in there, it gives nice weight, and it's pretty good for putting pins in. But since I do have crushed walnut shells, I'm gonna go ahead and grab those and put them in. If you have a plate or a bowl to put underneath to catch any of your small pieces, that's a good idea so you don't spill crushed walnut shells everywhere. And you can also use a funnel to help you get the crushed walnut shells into the smaller hole. All right, I think that's enough. Hold it though, they do compact pretty well. Oh, that's pretty good. I'm gonna, nope, there's still room. I want to fill this up as much as possible. That's pretty good there. So now I'm going to take a pin to help me keep this closed. And hopefully keep crushed walnut shells in there. Now a trick if you end up having crushed walnut shells that are flowing out is you can actually get a little bit of what's called polyfill or fluff and put a little bit on top and that can kind of hold in the walnut shells so that they don't fall out but I'm feeling pretty comfortable about this and I'm loving that it's a nice compact pincushion. Now we're gonna hand sew this closed and for that I'm going to need a needle and some thread and I'm actually gonna use a thimble. So I have two different thimbles here. This one you're probably used to seeing your mom or grandma might have a thimble like this. You may even use a thimble like this. It's a pretty traditional metal thimble. This one here is a leather thimble, and I actually like this one a little bit better. It just feels a little bit more comfortable and forms to my finger a little bit better. So I prefer a leather thimble. It actually does have a little metal piece right here 
and the whole point of the thimble is really just to protect my finger as I'm pushing the needle through. So the back end of that needle doesn't poke into my finger because over time that can really just wear on your finger and it gets sore. Okay, so I'm gonna put on my leather thimble and I'm gonna get started with sewing the edge here. Now to sew this edge, you could put a knot in your thread. I don't usually put knots in my thread because I don't like having knots in my thread. Having knots in my thread often means that I have to take a knot out of my thread. So putting a knot in my thread on purpose feels silly. I start by doing three stitches in place. one. I have these long tails of thread here that are just going to be in my way. So I'm going to trim those off and that way they won't be in my way. And right where I trim those threads, I'm going to go ahead and do three stitches in place. So three little loops. There we go. And a third one. And before the third one closes, I'm going to put my thread through the loop, and that actually does create a knot. Now I have this tail that I don't need, so I'm just going to trim that off. Now I can go ahead and stitch along the edge. So I want to line up that edge as best I can to make a nice neat edge. And I'm just gonna do, this is called a whip stitch because it whips around. And I'm just going to whip around the edge. And the closer you have these stitches together, the less likely it is that you'll have any crushed walnut shells coming through. Now, if you make this seam, make these stitches all along this edge, the seam, and you end up having crushed walnut shells coming through, just go ahead and do stitch again, just putting a stitch between where you'd put all the previous stitches, and that should close up any holes and gaps. We're just going to keep going all the way to the end. When we get to the end, we're going to do just like we did before, three stitches in place. and. The last two, I like putting my needle through the loop to just make that knot make it secure. There we go. And then if you don't want to have a dangling thread, kind of like we did at the beginning, have that dangling thread, you put your needle in to your item and have it come out somewhere in the middle. And then pull on that thread and carefully clip right next to the fabric. You wanna make sure you don't cut a hole in the fabric. And now that thread has been sucked in there and it's all tucked away and it'll be harder for it to come loose. Now we can release our pin and here's the moment of truth. Do this over a plate or a bowl. See if you have any crushed walnut shells coming out and I don't. So there we go. My pin cushion is complete and the first thing I can do is take this needle that I just finished with it right in my pincushion. There we go. We're all done with our pincushion, so we're going to move on to making a stuffed heart. For the stuffed heart, we're again going to be sewing with felt. This one's made it just a little bit different. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our double layer of felt and we're going to draw a heart right on the felt. And this can be a little tricky to do. If you want, you can draw your heart on a piece of paper and then trace it out. You could also grab a cookie cutter and 
trace a cookie cutter, or if you have a nice stencil, you could use that. So there's lots of options for being able to draw your heart. You don't have to, just do it freehand if that's not comfortable to you. And we're going to take some pins and we're gonna pin the layers together because I have two layers of felt right here. So there we go. Two layers of felt pinned together. And now we're gonna take it to our sewing machine just like this. We're not going to cut it first. And we're gonna start here and sew all the way around, leaving a hole open on this straight line because it's always easier to sew closed a straight line later. So let me take it to my machine and I'm just gonna follow that line. Just like before, when you get to a point where you're gonna turn, you lift your presser foot up, you pivot, and then you put your presser foot down and that's all with the needle in the down position. Now again, I'm just using my hands to kind of guide the fabric. And I've been doing this for a really long time, so I'm able to just kind of nudge it in the right direction. If at any point it really starts getting off, you just lift your press foot up, turn it a little bit, and get yourself right back on track. And you can do that like every couple stitches. You don't have to think, oh, I need it to go a ways. You can do one stitch, lift, turn, one stitch, lift, turn. That's totally fine. So we're just following our line as best we can. If you get a little off your line, totally fine. And now you don't want to go all the way around to the end. Remember, we want to leave ourselves a hole. So that's a good two inches or so. I'm going to lift my needle up so it's out of my fabric. And then I can pull this whole thing out of the way and use that thread cutter to cut it. There we go. Now I can cut all the way around this and I have a couple options. You can use just the regular scissors like we did before. If you want a little fun and you have access to pinking shears, these are super fun. And pinking shears have a zigzag blade. So it just makes for a nice decorative edge. So we're just gonna cut, and you wanna cut a little ways away from your stitching. You wanna make sure you're definitely not cutting into your stitching. Pinking shears make for a fun zigzaggy edge, especially on a heart. If you're not a heart person, you could totally do this with a star or really any basic shape. You could do it with some more complicated shapes if you wanted. I've cut all the way around my heart, and now it's time to stuff the heart. And I'm just using some polyfill stuffing. Let's make sure that we remove our pins and put them in our pincushion. And now we're gonna stuff. Open this up, and you wanna stuff just a little bit at a time, and you always wanna start stuffing the furthest away parts first. So we're going to start by filling up this, what is that, the top curve of the heart. And it always takes, in my estimation, about twice as much stuffing as I think it will, sometimes even more. So depending on how firm you want your heart is going to depend on how much stuffing you put in. Stuff 
this up here. Now, if you haven't overstuffed your heart, you might be able to take this to the sewing machine and stitch it closed. If you can't, you can go ahead and use the whip stitch technique that we did in making a pincushion. So that's another option. But I want to just push all the stuffing out of the way as much as I can, close this up, and then I'm gonna add a couple pins to keep it closed and keep that stuffing out of the way. And then I'm gonna stitch this on my sewing machine super carefully and then kind of re-fluff everything up to move the fluff back into place. Now when you start stitching, you wanna start at least a half inch back and stitch over some of your stitching, stitch the hole closed, and then just go ahead and stitch all the way to the end. And that stitching over where you've stitched before is gonna add security so that the threads don't start coming loose and making a hole. So I'm gonna squish it down with my fingers and squish it down with my presser foot, and it might take a little more moving with my hand to get it to go into place. And again, if this is tough, if it's not fitting underneath your sewing machine, no worries. Just go ahead and stitch it closed by hand. Now, this machine has a back stitch, so you can also back stitch, go back and forward at the beginning and end of a seam, and that locks the seam to keep it from unraveling. So now I'm going to my threads on the machine. I'm going to use scissors to trim any of these silly threads shorter. Now I can use my fingers and fluff this up. And now I have a cute little heart pillow that I could use for a doll, or I could use for decoration, or I could just give to a friend. It's a nice, stuffy, soft heart pillow. Wasn't that so fun and easy? I can't wait to show you our very next project. Make sure to come back here